This is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and this is the 3D printer that single-handedly started the speed wars in consumer-grade 3D printers. And for a good reason, this comes right out of the box printing extremely fast in multiple colors or materials, and it's able to make some really high-quality prints. And Bamboo Lab was nice enough to send this unit over to me with an absolute ton of filament to use, and all they asked for in return is a video about their printer with no strings attached. But first, let's check out the unboxing and setup process of this printer. And it all comes in this one box, which is nicely packed, and just under the top packing materials, you'll see that the entire printer is inside of a bag, with two of the ends taped to the box. Just take these off and pull up, and it takes the entire printer out. And at the bottom of the box, there are some filament rolls. And here's everything out of the box with the bag off of the printer. But there's still some unpacking to do, because the inside of the printer is packed with more stuff. So you're going to have to remove the glass top, and open up the front glass door to remove some bolts, so you can pull out the AMS unit. But before I can do that, I need to take this foam off, and remove this box that has tools and parts for the printer in it, because there is a little assembly required. And with a little bit of wiggling, the AMS just slides right out. And with that out, I need to remove this black piece of plastic now, and there's red stickers pointing to all the bolt locations. And now I can get to these two giant stickers, which are bedded adhesion stickers, so if you damage the material on your build plate, you can just switch it out for these. And underneath that is the actual magnetic build plate. And this is double sided, so this is the cool plate for only PLA, and you do need to use glue stick on this or your PLA might fuse to it. And the other side is the engineering plate for just about all the other materials. And there are three more red stickers pointing to screws that I need to remove. This does have a full touchscreen display that attaches by a ribbon cable in the front and just kind of snaps onto the machine. And it does have a small hinge to it so you can adjust your viewing angle, which is pretty nice. And if we take a look on the inside of the printer, you'll see the print head, which is a pretty nice compact little setup that even has a LiDAR sensor on the side of it, and the front cover is held on by magnets, so you can get to everything on the inside of this relatively easily. But anyways, let's get this thing powered on and set up. And this will warn you again about the screws that I removed earlier, so make sure you do that. After that, it's going to have to calibrate itself, which is going to take a few minutes, and it's going to be very noisy. Because how fast this printer moves around, it has to compensate for the vibrations. So it's going to go through a bunch of them and trying to figure out what would work best to keep it from shaking too much. And don't worry, you don't have to really do anything for this, it's all automated. So it figures all this out for the input shaping. And when it's doing this, I think the sound is very interesting. So here it is. But with all that done, this is pretty much ready to print. And it has a bunch of pre-sliced files already on it, so I'm printing a basic Benchy as my first print for this. And in total, this took a little over 20 minutes. And that's because it takes a few minutes for the printer to actually get set up and ready to print, like all of the lines you see at the front of the build plate. It prints a couple lines, and then scans it with the LiDAR, so it can figure out what settings would be best for the first layer. And just to put things into perspective a little bit, before this printer was released, most consumer printers would take about an hour to an hour and 40 minutes to print this same boat. And for the most part, the only way you can achieve these speeds before this came out is to build your own custom printer. And you'd have to make sure everything was really dialed in and tuned. And if you want to see how this entire process goes down, check out my friend Fetter over on his YouTube channel, 3 d Print SOS. And he did an entire live stream series just on this one build, and the live streams themselves add up to about 45 hours. But with this printer, I was able to get this up and running and have my first print within an hour. And overall, it looks like it came out really nice. Besides the noticeable texture difference on the bottom, where it's a bit shinier and the rest of it's matte. But this is a pre-sliced file, and I might be using the wrong PLA for this. And this isn't the only pre-sliced file that's on here. There's a ton of them, actually. And it's nice to see that they have pictures, print time, and how much material they need, all just in their thumbnails. And like I talked about before, this does have an AMS, or automatic material system. So you can load it up with different filaments and be able to print something in multiple materials all at once. That being said, it does have some limitations because some materials just do not work in it. And it also says not to use it with cardboard spools. So this one for matter hackers should work fine. But I have seen people have success using the cardboard spools from Poly maker, so it's going to be a bit of trial and error. This printer does have its own slicing software, which is pretty easy to use, and I thought I'd start out by printing something in multicolor, like this little axolotl. And the entire black part of this is going to be printed in carbon fiber PLA. Because this printer comes with a hardened steel nozzle, you can print filled materials like carbon fiber, fiberglass, and glow-in-the-dark without risking destroying your nozzle. And this came out way better than I thought it would, to be honest, with no color bleeding whatsoever. But I didn't mean to print it with a brim, so let me clean that off real quick, and show you one downside to printing in multicolor, and that's all the waste that it makes every time it needs to change color every layer. Seeing that the axolotl was only 19 grams in total, and had 60 grams of waste. 
But if all of your color change is at one layer height, you're not going to have that much waste. It's just one changeover. So stuff like this has almost no waste. So even the multicolor lid on this was only three color changeovers with very little waste. And those changeovers do take time as well because that axolotl that I printed should have took about an hour. But because it had a changeover so many times, it took over five hours. But when it came to making this hard case, I was able to print it in different pieces and different colors all at once. And with just a few screws, I was able to assemble it and have a function box because you can tell it to print each object one at a time and it can change colors all on its own so you don't have to do anything so if you wanted to make a bunch of the same part but different colors you can do that and I was able to print these different color ring displays in about half an hour and I was able to make a few other displays as well relatively quick and this all probably cost me under two dollars in material cost and for some reason if you need more than four materials or colors you can always add another AMS to this actually you can add three more on top of this so you can have up to 16 different materials but if you are looking to to do that, each AMS unit is $350. And you'll also need the AMS hub, which is another $50. But you can definitely make some pretty cool things with just the four color setup. But there is another feature to the AMS that I really like, which is if you run out of filament, it will switch it for you to the next roll, and then just continue your print like normal. And if you do a lot of printing like I do, you always end up with spools with not enough filament on them to do anything. This way I can actually use all of those up. And if you are worried about not being able to use certain materials or spools, there is a spool holder on the back of this that you can hook up and print with. You just can't use it at the same time as AMS. And since I've been talking about different materials, this isn't limited to just PLA. And it can print much higher temperature materials, and because this machine is fully enclosed, it keeps all the heat in, and it keeps your parts from warping. And I was able to print all the pieces for this in ASA, and you might have noticed this has some different textures to it, like the carbon fiber look. And this is due to a different build plate that I'm using, because you can swap those out. And there are some aftermarket ones that are really cool. And this is the textured PEI build plate from Bamboo Lab, but both of these carbon fiber ones are just aftermarket ones that you can buy. And on the other side of them, there is a textured PEI sheet as well. And if you're looking to get anything that I showed in this video, I have links to everything in the description below. And as I've already shown in this video, there's a lot that you can print with a 3D printer instead of just printing toys or knickknacks. And I find myself printing a lot of tools or making completely new products. Just keep in mind it will take some 3D design skills to actually make your own stuff. But at least in my experience, it's been totally worth it. And don't worry, you don't have to learn how to do 3D design work to be able to 3D print. There's plenty of people that upload free files for anyone to use, or others will charge a small fee for you to print it as many times as you want. And most of the time, you can just search for what you're looking for and there'll be something. Like how I was looking for a tissue box holder for an interesting GIF. And I found this cool looking textured one that I printed in a rainbow pastel matte PLA. And I know in this video I've been really talking up this printer and saying just pretty much good things about it. But as we all know, nothing is perfect. I have seen people having problems in the Facebook groups with defective parts. And from what I've seen, Bamboo Lab is pretty good about fixing these problems. But their response times can be pretty slow at times, which will feel even longer when you have a broken machine. Also, those machines are pretty loud. So if you have limited space and plan on sleeping in the same room as one of these, just know that it's not quiet. There is a silent mode that you can turn on which will slow it down, but it will also dramatically increase your print time. And keeping it shut does muffle it a little bit, but not by much. Overall, I really do think this is one of the best printers on the market right now, especially seeing that other companies are trying so hard to make a competitor to this. But sadly, a lot of these are coming out and not living up to expectation, or being faulty directly out of the box, or after a very small amount of time of printing. And with all that said, this printer isn't exactly cheap either, but it's also not the most expensive I've seen, coming in at $1,450 before tax and delivery. And you can save about $250 if you don't get it with the AMS unit, and I really suggest not doing that, and just getting the full combo, because if you do want to get it later on, it's going to cost you an extra $100. Either way, it's still a decent chunk of money for these printers, but they do have another option, and that's the Bamboo Lab P1P, and it's actually a stripped down version of the X1. They basically took away the enclosure, the extra cooling fan, and really dumbed down the display on this, and it also doesn't have the LiDAR function, but the overall print quality and speed of one of these is on par with the X1, and I can back that up because I own one of these and I have for about seven months now, and I've been and printing with it non-stop and I even printed an entire enclosure for it and you can get one of these for $599 and as I was recording everything for this video they actually came out with a new version of the P1P and it's a P1S and this is basically the P1P with an enclosure for only $100 more or you can get it with an AMS unit as well for an extra $250 so definitely some really good options depending on your budget and what you need to make well I think that sums up just about all my thoughts on the Bamboo Lab printers so let me know what you think of these and if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll try to get back to every single one of them. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.